Food Heals Podcast, episode 297. I love food. I love cooking. I love whole food, plant-based. I do not calorie count. I do not watch what I eat. If my body wants it, I eat it. Holistic Voice presents the Food Heals Podcast with your hosts, Alison Melody and Susie Hardy. Join the Food Heals Nation and learn the secrets to go from feeling unwell to healing yourself. Warning, side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, an increase in sexual activity, feelings of joy, cravings for kale and quinoa, and a spike in Tinder matches. In rare cases, people have experienced a strong desire to put down the Ben & Jerry's, get off the couch, and take a walk outside. If you experience any of these symptoms, tell your Facebook friends immediately. All right, welcome, Food Heals Nation. Thanks for joining me. I'm Allison Melody. What if I told you that you could travel the world, visit 21 countries, and eat a whole foods, plant-based diet the entire time? Today's guest, Seika Majeur, did just that. She and her hubby, Brian, recently returned from their vegan voyage around the world, and Seika is here to share her adventure with us. On their journey, they interviewed top chefs, enjoyed plant-powered cuisine from around the globe, used cruelty-free beauty products for travel, and blogged about how fun and easy it can be to travel vegan. So I'm really excited to share this episode with you. Seika and I had a blast. Roll it, Roxy. The Food Hills Podcast starts now. She recently completed a 21-country vegan voyage with her husband, Brian, where they interviewed top chefs, enjoyed cuisine from around the world, used plant-powered, cruelty-free beauty products for travel, and blogged about how easy and fun it can be to travel vegan. Please welcome my guest, Sega Major. Thank you so much for having me. It's a real joy to be on your podcast. It's so wonderful to have you. I love singing your last name. I think it's so beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm so glad we met because now we have become these like plant-powered besties who just meet at Mercy for Animal events. It's <laughs> so perfect, how we roll. right? <laughs> yeah. So beautiful. And then sometimes you just show up to my house when I'm not home. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. I'll try to keep that to a minimum, but... <laughs> no, it's okay. I like, I like having fans and stalkers show up to my house. It makes me feel really important. Perfect. I'll, I'll keep it up then. <laughs> <laughs> we're just kidding. We did get the day wrong, but we're so glad that we got the day right today. And she is here with us. So take us back and let us know a little bit about who you are and what you do. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, my name's Seika, and I have a brand for goodness sakes, a play on my name. And it's all about bringing veganism to as many people as we can. Yeah. Uh, my journey started in be- becoming vegan really it came down to loving animals right so that was the first the foundation uh that brought me to veganism and from there I then started understanding more about how it impacts my health in really positive yes. ways and then I started understanding about how it impacts uh the planet in really beneficial ways and then of course as I've become more aware of the climate crisis, uh, the environmental impact of a vegan diet has really come a front runner because I realized that in order for us all to live uh, past, you know, this generation, we're going to need more people eating vegan. And our children to live, our future children. Yeah, our future children, in order for them to have a planet, we have to transition the way, our lifestyle. Yeah, we have to step the fuck up. Right, it's so true. And so then the other component is social justice, right? So that, uh, you know, minorities, people of low socioeconomic status are in in equally impacted by the negative outcomes outcomes of uh animal the yeah. animal agriculture well we are here in la and right now i can walk to a juice bar i can walk to a whole foods i can walk to anything that i need to eat healthy right now and 20 miles away or less they are living in food deserts where they are there is no access to healthy affordable fruits and vegetables and it is absolutely a crime it's a crime it's horrible right it's horrible people are being fed food that is going to kill them right well fast food it's like all the corn fed garbage antibiotics that are pumped into the meat and that is the cheap food that people of low socioeconomic status as you said or low underserved communities can afford it's disgusting that as a society we're accepting this it's so true and i mean speaking of antibiotics being being fed to our food this is not a topic that a lot of people talk about Mm -hmm. right uh but the super bugs that are coming out now i mean scientifically backed this isn't it sounds like a conspiracy theory when i talk about it but it's not (laughs) yeah it's not it's it's real and people using antibiotics for you know curing their own uh problems that 
pop up, their own illnesses that would be solved by their own body, uh, you know, by enduring the sickness for a little bit. Right. Uh, we're creating super bugs, which is really, really hard on our systems. And the majority of the antibiotics, we as humans use them a lot for our own medicine. Right. But a huge amount of antibiotics is being fed to us through our foods. Right. And then it's becoming, it's creating antibiotic resistance. So I know you and I are like, we're going to do everything we can to not take the antibiotics because we believe the body heals itself and there's vegetables and fruits and vitamins and cures that we can do naturally. But even if we were going to choose the antibiotics, now our body has become resistant to it. Not ours because we're plant-based, but most people's um, has become resistant to it because you're getting it all fed to you in the animal products that we're eating. And so it is creating literally disease. We are creating disease with this factory farm practices. It's so true. We're, we're blasting all of the good bacteria that's in our gut, which can take five years to heal, even if you're only dousing your right, system yeah. with antibiotics, with one series of antibiotics. So yeah. to imagine what's happening when you're being fed that every day, you are destroying your body's ability to fight back against chronic disease and, and horrible things that can happen to our bodies. 100%. So we just went through the negative, but I would love to know, like, what got you started? Like, how did this seed get planted? And I know we're going to talk about your vegan voyage and the journey that you guys took. And Brian's here. Hello, Brian, hanging out with Jackson over there. Thank Hello. you for taking care of my dog. And we're going to get into all of that. But I'd love to know just like how your journey started into this. Yeah. So my journey, I, I've been an animal lover my whole life. Uh, the first time that I went vegan, I was in, I was, in middle school. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything about what veganism was. Um, when I told people about it, it was very confusing. And I came to that because my I was supposed to do a long-term project in middle school and I chose to do it on mad cow disease, bovine spongiform encephalopathy. Right. <laughs> and so I... Uh, wow, that was technical. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> I did that and it was really, really interesting. And it kind of came down to mad cow disease was developed by cows eating cows. Mm. And cows are vegan creatures and so they shouldn't uh consume meat and, right and, and cows eat work. grass people right <laughs> exactly and drink cow milk by the way that's who cow milk is made for right. is cows a growing uh, so um <laughs> Not humans. right exactly so cows were eating cows because they were taking the waste product from factory farmed cows and feeding it back to them right for low cost it's really really horrific so they're feeding cow body parts to cows uh creating uh bovine spongiform encephalopathy really hard to prove because you have to do an autopsy and cut open the brain in order to find the damage be able to identify it as mad cow disease as opposed to dementia or alzheimer's oh wow really interesting stuff that's actually interesting i don't think i realized that yeah you can go into some long reads if you're into i know you're into research if you're digging into the internet and um and seeing the research that people have behind that is mm -hmm. really, really interesting. So I'll leave that for another day. But that brought me to uh, watching how animals are processed in the animal industry. And it was really horrific. Um, and it it shocked me. It made me really want to change my ways. Mm -hmm. Now, I said that was the first time I went vegan. I had at that time a very severe eating disorder. And I was hospitalized. And my, uh, my control over my diet was taken away from me because mm. I was being irresponsible with it to, to phrase it one way right I was not eating so um I I had a very structured diet and medical professionals overseeing how I how I consumed so uh that veganism was totally taken off the table was not allowed to participate in it wow. um and so that was just you know an an interesting path so I was told at that time in order to go through healing from my eating disorder I needed to have animal products and I I came back to them. So about six years ago now, I watched Vegucated. Mm -hmm. And have you seen that documentary? Yes. And I got into watching, like, uh, I was kind of reinvigorated. And now I'm in a very healthy place with food. And I was re-inspired and kind of realized that I had a new opportunity to align my values with my actions. Mm. And I want to pause there and kind of emphasize that, that I had the opportunity to align my values with my actions. Because I think that a lot of times people will say, oh, well, people who have a plant-based diet or who are vegan have different values. And, and I disagree. I think that for the most part, we have the same values and it's just figuring out how to align differently. And it's just figuring out how to align our actions mm. with those values. So I came back around to it and it, it was all about the animals. It was all about, I mean, I loved meat. 
right? Animal products, loved it, loved it, loved it. Uh Um, And it was really about being so willing to sacrifice my love for my sensory pleasure, uh, being able to sacrifice that because I cared about animals. And it was, there's no comparison. When I would look at the horror that they would go through, did not justify the the benefit that I would get, right? The value I would get out of it. Uh, And so then once I started doing that, that's when I really started learning about all the other benefits. And I would love to know because when I was, so I feel like right now, the only way to see this stuff is online or in documentaries, but it's not in the news or anything like that. When I was like, 15 or 16, we were at my girlfriend's beach house in North Carolina, and there was four girls, and it was on the news, and they were showing the abuse of the cows, and I was absolutely horrified by this, and they showed that, I mean, I'm not going to get graphic, but they they showed something that you, as a 15-year-old, I was scarred for life, and in that moment, we formed a group called Four Far. Four girls, four animal rights. Like, we just made up this thing. I am the only living member of Four Far because for some reason I stayed with it. I didn't go vegan at the time, but I decided I will never eat hamburger meat again. What was it that you saw or what was it that changed you in that moment? Because I love to – my question is, like, why did I stay with this path? And it took – and then I got – I went vegan later because of health reasons and then went back to the animals. But why is it that I saw that and I was so affected and that some other people weren't? You know, it's such a great question. So I I come, I I just actually released a good friend of mine. I was not part of the planning, but a brilliant uh, video creator named Tony Seagal created uh, a video you can find on YouTube on my channel. It's called The Peaceful Latte. And it is... It is like one or two minutes, really, really short, but it captures exactly what happens in my mind that makes it really easy for me to say, no, no, thank you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not willpower. It's not. It's not willpower that I'm using majority of the time. It's that when I see, uh, you know, a bottle of milk, like a jug of milk, my mind flashes to those videos. Me too. It's like what's happening to the baby. Yeah. It's like um, Pavlov's dogs or something. Yeah. That's what's happened right. to us. And my brain goes, shows me how it came and I'm like, oh, I don't want any part of that. Right. No, thank you. Yeah. And, you know, all I, the craving is gone. All the craving's gone. Yeah. Because now, I'm, now I've, it's been replaced with disgust right. and with like wanting to go save. And a visceral reaction. Yes. Yeah. Like I will never put cow's milk in my body unless right. I did not know. <laughs> right. Right. Unless they're like, here's some oat milk. I'd be like, ooh, oh fuck. Right. Exactly. And then I'm sick for, you know, right. have totally a hangover for three sick. days yes. from having that put in my body. So that I think is really, really powerful. I know that there are some people who are vegan for the animals even and refuse to watch those videos. I think that's fine. If you yeah. are all, if you, I don't know how they harness themselves to the power of it, but if they're able to do it, great. Um, there are a lot of people who consume animal products and say that the videos are too graphic for them. And that's really hard for me to accept. Right. I hear you. And it's, that is actually interesting because except for that one cow video I see, I, I saw, I still haven't seen all, I had, um, I remember I bought a bunch of documentaries and I had the PETA documentaries and I put one on and I was like, I can't watch this. But the reason that I stopped eating all the other things was because I watched my parents lose their lives to cancer, learned that according to scientific research, a plant-based diet is the most anti-cancer diet out there, started experimenting on myself. And so my why actually was not about the animals, except for the one video I saw about the cows, but for everything else, my why was because I'm not going to end up like them because I saw them lose their life and vitality. So that's what I see. Right. Right. And so you see the milk or the, the video that you saw and you make that connection. And yes, I have the cow connection. But other than that, I see my parents. It's- And I go, they lost their lives way too quickly. They lost their hair. They lost their vitality. Their skin was sagging. Their eyes, everything changed. They lost their ability to live and enjoy a vibrant life. And that is what drives me. And, and now, and that was before the animal activism. And then I, you know, got into that and I was like, well, holy shit. And the environmental impact. And then I was like, oh my God. But it was because of health. I was like, I will not let this temple be deteriorated. Right. right. And it's it's so powerful. So um, I was I was working in a very uh, young startup in San Francisco and the whole company, I mean, the average age was probably like 
I don't know, 27 or yeah, no, yeah. Th- 35, right? So very, very young company. Everybody was very fit. Everybody, you know, competing in the Fitbit challenges and our steps are all up past 20,000, right? Very, very fit company. Yeah. And uh, for like the health insurance comes by sometimes and does like, you know, free health screening and they tell you about your BMI and I, I hate BMI, so I won't talk about that. But um, oh, great. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, they tell you about all these different factors and I went through and as the nurse is going through after he's taken all my recordings and I should give a disclaimer here that I love food I love cooking I love whole whole food plant-based I do not calorie count I do not watch what I eat if my body wants it I eat it right that's that's where that's where I'm at right so um sometimes I eat milkshakes and you know vegan chocolate and all that stuff I'm not I'm not conservative with that uh, so he's reading through my paperwork and he's like, he's looking at my cholesterol. He's looking at my blood work. He's, I forget all the indicators that were in my blood work, my, you know, BMI, which I think is stupid, but anyway, all these different things. And he goes, you are so healthy. I've never seen cholesterol this good and your blood markers this, this good. And he's going through all of the people who are generally very healthy people at this company. Yeah. And he goes, what do you eat? <laughs> and I'm like, I'm vegan. And he's like, what's that again? Wow, I love that. Right. And you're just going, this is a medical professional. And again, I'm not monitoring my food to be super healthy. I right. just eat. You just plants. don't eat a lot of right. crap. Exactly. And so the plants make up for any ve- look, there's Oreos are vegan. Right. There is vegan crap. <laughs> right. But we're having less of it. Right. Because all of the other things that we're eating are so nourishing yep. and are so nutritious. And your your taste buds start to change. It's totally, totally true. Yeah. And you start to get a lot more value out of things that maybe didn't have as much flavor yeah. before, right? Because if yeah. you're eating a McDon- McDonald's sandwich, you're getting all this monosodium glutamate. You're getting Ugh. so many different um, false flavors that are chemicals for your tongue and right. they have your body react a certain way. And they have addictive properties yep. that make you wanting more and more and more. And so you come away from that and yes, your taste buds start to change. You start to go, wow this you know wow I've never gotten so much value out of grapes before yeah and now like my brain and my taste buds are intertwined because I get I nerd out and get so sexy excited when it's a gluten-free vegan pasta or a vegan cheese or something that I haven't had before I am salivating because I know that it's a replacement for something and it may not even if it's made out of something that isn't 100% like from the, like, I don't know, like, it's not made of, out of kale. Yeah. But it's still not made out of cow's milk or whatever it was. You know, I geek out and um, it makes the experience so much better. It's more pleasurable and my body receives it differently because I am having so much joy around it where most people are eating out of stress, guilt, time, or they're, even if they are eating the Oreos or the Snickers or whatever, they're eating out of guilt and going, oh my God, I'm the worst person ever. And that is all affecting the way that the body is processing the food. 100%. Yeah. 100%. And when you're eating a bunch of heavy foods that don't feel good in your body and your body has to rest and recuperate in order to process your food, now instead of feeling like you can go out and experience life full of joy after your meal, you have to sit down on the couch. You have to rest. Right. You have to take a nap after dinner. Like that's not, that's not, not what food's supposed to, feel. to It's not no. how we're meant to feel. We're supposed to be energized. Yes. Yeah. If, if people could could only tap into for a few minutes how great our bodies are designed to feel, I think yeah. it would be magnificent. That's that's a magnificent game changer for inspiration to change your lifestyle. Yeah. And for those who are willing to do it, whenever I recommend people doing just a, a simple cleanse, five days, um, some, some with food and some with just juice, the amount of difference that they feel, first of all, they lose weight, their skin clears up, their eyes start glowing, their brain starts functioning. In five days, and they go, well, what the fuck else is possible? Right. It's amazing. And then their eyes are open, just like mine were. And you hear these stories of people who have really, really rough diagnoses, right? Cancer diagnosis. And they make the huge leap of switching to, you know, going to vegetable juices or switching to a completely whole whole foods, plant-based diet, not feeding the cancer. And they have these transformations. And you go you're beating something here right. that we don't have medicine to beat. Right. And you're beating it with food. Food heals. Food heals. <laughs> food heals. <laughs> My job is. interview over. There Thank it you, is. Thank you so much for being here. <laughs> Next up. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> I love it so much. So 
take us through because I'm a big traveler and, you know, I have my hacks, but I'm still learning. So how many countries did you guys go to? Tell me, take, take me through the vegan voyage. Yes. So this trip was 21 and we had done Colombia and New Zealand on different trips. Uh, but this one was our, like 21 in a row. And so we wow. started in Japan uh-huh. and worked our way. Should I go through the whole list? Um, yes. Okay. We need to know. Right. Heels Nation needs to know. <laughs> <laughs> so it was Japan, uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, uh, Macau, Thailand, <laughs> Cambodia, Vietnam, wow. Singapore, Malaysia, United Arab Emirates, so Abu Dhabi and Dubai, cool. Egypt, and then we went to the Holy Land. Oh, Tanzania. There Brian we go. is whispering to her right now from across the room. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, Tanzania and then the Holy Land. So we did uh, Tel Aviv and Jerusalem. And Tel Aviv is even better than people say it is for vegan food. Uh, and then we went over to Budapest, Vienna, and Prague. Wow. And London, Spain, Portugal, and then Iceland. And then America. And then the U.S. Yeah, okay. and then the okay. U.S. So we did New York on our way and then Den- stopped in New York, Michigan, Denver on our way back to California. New York is easy and fabulous. So okay. fabulous. <laughs> so I know we can't go through every country, but I would love some of the highlights, best and worst places, and what to do when there is no option. Or or it, it seems it seems like there is no option, but there's always an option because you're like, let me take the avocado from here and the rice from here and like throw some shit together. Exactly. And yeah. so that was a big part of why we were doing it and why we picked some of the tougher locations right Mm -hmm. people would say oh you can't be vegan in blank right right so you can't be vegan in egypt oh you can't do that in tanzania right and uh and we did (laughs) so (laughs) so spoiler alert you can and uh so some of the tougher so japan was so lovely love japan was not an easy place to be vegan uh they have a lot of meat in their dishes a lot of fish sauce you don't expect Mm -hmm. and a lot of cheese and so that's a new development i know a lot of people are really surprised to hear cheese that's a new development because thanks to american influence um, western influence uh into japan uh, they're now having a lot of uh cheese and unfortunately a lot of the disease that comes along with that and they're seeing spikes in that so that's it's a really interesting case study again for people who like to nerd out on the data like i do Mm -hmm. where you can you can watch a country bring in a, 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 a new staple, product yeah. and then see their disease spike with it. So Ugh. really, really... And like s- obesity. Right. Just as number one. Yep. It's really sad. Mm. So so that was a, that was tough uh, specifically because in Japan, they don't have to label things the way that we do. So if it's tofu cooked in chicken broth, they can just call it tofu. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I wouldn't even know to ask. Yeah. You know? And then you can go to like a curry restaurant and they'll have chicken, pork, beef fish curry and veggie curry Mm -hmm. but it is not actually a vet like it's not a vegan curry it's also happens to have vegetables in it and you're like doesn't everything have vegetables in it well no right but this one so you have to order specific it's really helpful to have a a card with you that says specifically what you can't eat in in japanese because there's not a lot of english around smart and i highly recommend connecting with the vegan japan facebook group or vegan tokyo facebook group really strong vegan community who loves to be connected and helpful and um they'll tell you to just take a picture of whatever you're gonna you're considering buying and send it in and somebody will message you right away and be like no don't get it or how amazing is that that this support group exists at our fingertips with our smartphones it's incredible it's amazing and it's it's instant friends like you have so many people to connect with and be friends with and it's it's really powerful. So that's that's definitely a number one thing to do is if you are vegan and you're traveling, connect with the city or the country that you're going to be in and say, hey, I'm coming. Does anybody want to meet up? Does anybody have any great ideas? And yeah. oftentimes that information will already be listed in there. Okay, two quick questions. Yeah. D- is there a Facebook group for every country? And did you make friends in every country? Uh, just about. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. There's either a city or a, or a country. So like for... Uh, for Egypt, there wasn't a Cairo vegan or Luxor vegan, but there was an Egypt vegan society. Got it. Right. Okay. Uh, so that was really cool. Um, and our hidden gem that we took away was Taipei, Taiwan. Mm-hmm. Nobody really talks about it, but it was so lovely. There's vegan, there's so many vegan restaurants. We couldn't eat at them all. 
while we wow, were there. Wow, that's yeah. amazing. We wanted to travel out of Taipei, but it was so fun in Taipei, we uh-huh. didn't leave. You're like, so, this is so great. Yep. I some can't get enough. Some of the best hiking we've ever done, and we've hiked California, we've hiked New Zealand, uh-huh. we've hiked Colombia, right? We've hiked some insane places and Taipei had really awesome hiking the people are so nice it's inexpensive so you're able to just feel really comfortable you know spending money and and exploring and that's really great that is really cool yeah and so what was your intention when you set out on the vegan voyage because it sounds like so much came out of it you're figuring out where to eat how to eat hiking meeting new friends like what was the intention of, of, of of starting this yeah absolutely so we, we kept hearing a, like, a common pushbacks against being vegan. One of the main ones that came up uh, with a lot of our friends is, yeah, but I travel. I think, yeah, I know it's healthy. Oh, yeah. I know it's good, but I travel, right? right? And we wanted to show people that that's just not, it's just a non-issue. 100%. You can make it happen. It's fine. You can eat a lot of the traditional foods of that place. And have a vegan twist. Like mm-hmm. we did it in Tanzania. We had so many traditional Tanzanian dishes and they just made it vegan for us. That's awesome. Yeah. Really, really powerful stuff. So that was one of them is to travel to these different places and um, and show how you can be vegan. Yeah. And then we also wanted to uh, connect the vegan community. So yes, making friends, networking, speaking to chefs who either are vegan already, own vegan restaurants, or top chefs who can make a vegan dish and were able to be kind of a vegan influence and really build that relationship. So it was a lot about connecting people and building relationship and seeing what's going on with veganism around the world. All right, Food Heals Nation, I hope you're enjoying our interview with Seika. And speaking of travel, while we did record this in my Food Heals studio in West Hollywood, I'm now recording this ad for you on the road. So I just came in to Orlando from Boston, and I flew from LA on Saturday. So it's been a few days now that I've been on the East Coast. And man, losing three hours of sleep is not easy for me, never has been. But wow, there is something that has saved me, saved my life. It's my Vitality Bits, which are spirulina and chlorella mixed together, which is the most potent form of algae from the brand Energy Bits, energybits.com, which you know I'm a huge fan of. We've had Catherine on the show. And the Vitality Bits are just an energy and health you know combination dream come true it is an easy and natural way to improve vitality boost longevity get healthy high protein low calorie nutrition all at the same time this is something that i travel with i took them before i got on the plane i took them while i was on the plane to keep my immune system boosted and then i took them to help me you know with my restorative sleep and then energy throughout the day so i love the vitality bits and next up i am starting tomorrow i'll be at this amazing conference called PodFest. Um, Tomorrow I'm doing a book signing and then Friday I'm doing a workshop. So I'll be presenting to a group. And then the next day I have my women and wellness panel, which I'm super excited about. And then I'm hosting karaoke on Saturday night. I'm the official karaoke host. So look, I'm going to need a lot of energy for all of the things. Thank goodness I already caught up on sleep when I was in Boston. I went to Kripalu to um, amazing workshop with Gabby Bernstein so I could work on my next book, which I'll tell you about as soon as I can. But I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have gotten through all this travel without my energy bits, my vitality bits. They're just a game changer when it comes to making sure I get all the nutrition I need while I travel, making sure I feel energetic and making sure I'm getting good quality sleep. So if you want to check it out, energybits.com, of course. I have a Food Heals discount for you, 20% off using the coupon code FOODHEALS at energybits.com. Safe travels to you, Food Heals Nation. How does somebody who wants to do this afford to do this? Yeah. Yeah. So there are, so there's, oh man, I'm trying to remember the name of the podcast. There is a, uh, a woman who, t- uh, oh, the podcast is How to Afford Anything. Oh, I'm listening. Isn't that great? <laughs> and so she 
uh, has a blog out right now that talks about how she got a job out of college. She did a podcast on it and then I think she has it written out in her blog, but she got a job out of college making, you know, $20 an hour was, did some writing on the side to make a little extra, worked for about five years, tried to save as much as she could and then traveled for two years oh, okay. without working. Yeah. And so she spells it all out. Um, and how she did it. And sometimes she's camping and sometimes she's staying in hotels and she's doing it on the cheap and she's going yeah. to the cheaper areas. Right. And so that I feel like a lot of people have asked that question. How mm -hmm. do you afford to do this traveling? And, um, that her situation isn't exactly our situation, but I think she does a great job of showing people like exactly how one could do it. Even if they weren't, even if they're making like a, you know, a job right out of college. So like on a budget, on a budget. Yeah. So Brian and I both worked kind of um, very, very intense corporate jobs mm -hmm. and we'd been saving for a long time and knew that we were going to be moving into another period of really working very hard in our business. And so we decided to take a lot of our savings and, and pour it into spreading the vegan message. So you were like, we're just going to do this. We're just going to do it. And your intention was to spread the message. Absolutely. Oh, I love that. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, we were able to collaborate uh, with some amazing hotels and restaurants along our way. Um, uh, who lovingly sponsored our meals, right? Just giving us like free meals wow. or uh, free hotel stays in order to promote their vegan offerings as well yeah, and, yeah. and give them coaching on what they can adjust for their vegan menu, which was huge. Uh, so that helped a lot in... Uh, so there's all these, um, I don't know if you guys, like on board panda, there's like all these viral things that are like the, when the hotel claps back at the so-called influencer who's like, hi, I'm going to promote you. Can I get some free stuff? And it makes, it gives our industry a really bad name. Mm -hmm. But I have also been fortunate enough to experience like getting some free stuff or free promotion. And so how does someone approach that when you're like, no, I have a true altruistic mess message. I'm not just a fake influencer on Instagram taking selfies. Like I actually have um, people who want to learn from me and we can have this mutually beneficial relationship. So what's some of your advice for approaching a hotel or a restaurant? Yeah, great question. So we reached out to, <clears throat> I don't know, we collaborated with like 200 restaurants or 150 restaurants. So That's amazing. we have That's to have huge. reached out to probably like 5x that, right? Yeah, yeah. And so, or more, 10x, yeah. right? The so, more you reach out to, the more results you get, but a lot, you're going to get a lot of no's or never replies. Right, exactly. Yeah. And um, we got a lot of people who reached out after we left a city who were like, hey, we just saw on Instagram that you were here. We missed you. Like, right. are, like, are you still here? Can you come back? And we're like, we'll probably not be back to your city for like years, if ever. Right. right. And so that was really sad to miss out on really cool people we could have collaborated with. So um, we've had one time that it like we had some people respond really with like a lot of meanness. Mm -hmm. and uh, those, are the, those are the ones that I've seen online. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that happened one time out of all of these. And for the most part, people are so appreciative oh, and great. so grateful. And so yeah. we're kind of thinking, okay, maybe we like for that one time, maybe we hit somebody on a bad day and they just needed some extra love and you know, yeah. it, something else is going on there. So uh, sure. we kind of tried to, to shake it off it and move. Yeah. <laughs> but the whole goal is to give so much more than yeah. we get. Like oh, that's yeah. what it's all about. And we're just saying, hey, we spent put so much time and love and money into building these platforms. And we're doing that to help spread the word about these things that are really important and you are really important. So we'd love to partner with you. Uh, for the most part, I think it's, it's you, you know, you're being honest. You write a message that if you do get put out, like blasted on the internet, that you're happy with everybody reading what you wrote. Yeah, so, totally. right, that's, that's a good point. Right, yeah. that's, I think that's number one. You say what, if they if they put it out to the world, you'd be mm -hmm. like, that's okay. Yeah, I meant it authentically. I meant it. Yeah. I still mean it. And I'm sorry that this was upsetting for you. Right, totally. Yeah, and so I think that the, the influencing and the opportunity to spread word is so important. I mean, people pay tens, twenties, thousands of dollars. I mean, millions for large corporations to get their marketing out. Right. And so these platforms are just, they're so powerful. And we can see the the data and the statistics behind how much uh, power, marketing power influencers have because they really build relationships with their audiences. Yeah, absolutely. And so you're reaching out to people and you're getting a good response. And so were there some favorites that you would recommend that you could say like this is a place everyone needs to go I know you're doing a YouTube channel yes and so you're going to tell us 
everything there. Yes. But can you give us a couple of highlights? Oh my gosh, this is <laughs> so hard. I wish I had prepared for this question because I would like to give a shout out to like so many to all of amazing them. places. Yeah, so I know I'm going to forget some, but let me see here. So one of the first ones that pops to my mind is a uh, boutique hotel in Cambodia. Uh, it's called Baby Elephant and it's called Be Happy is their completely vegan hotel so or hostel so baby elephant is uh like very vegan friendly menu the owners are vegan uh, but they do have some non-vegan options on their menu or they they may have converted completely to vegan by now I haven't checked in with them very recently but they're very socially conscious Mm -hmm. environmentally conscious they're all about educating their team um, in Cambodia hiring locals and educating them and helping them rise through the ranks and put women in leadership and they contribute to so many cool programs in Cambodia they're just awesome yeah they're awesome I'm in in Egypt so Egypt it's really hard to find vegan food uh we ate a ton of falafel (laughs) Uh, it's a really interesting place to be. I loved being there. I think Egyptian history is so fascinating. And Mm. so I got a lot of value out of just being in, in that energy and that history. There's a place called Osana Family Wellness and they, I actually, their episode was just released today on my YouTube channel. Uh, so obviously it's long ago for anybody who's listening, but, (laughs) uh, so that was, they are amazing. They're this unique oasis inside, in Cairo, uh, Egypt, where it's really hard to find kind of health food and vegetables and all of that. And you literally come through these, this big wooden door and it feels like you stepped into a different world where they have this, I think it's three story building with all these yoga rooms and healing, like acupuncture and massage and talk therapy and childcare and so many other cool things. And they also have a vegetarian, vegan, mostly vegan. They don't use that word, but they, right. It's just right. health food. Um, cause they don't want to scare people off, but it's mostly vegan restaurant right there. And that was really cool. Cause it just stands out so much in Egypt. Um, I'm getting really hungry right now because I haven't eaten since our events. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. The little, the snacks I and mean, yes, beautiful, beautiful yes. food. But yeah, I know. We had an amazing event today where Leah was um, book signing for her new book, Leah Garces. It's called Grilled and Turning story, Adversaries into Allies. Her story was so amazing. She did such a good job. So if you're listening, please go buy that book. Cause, and we're definitely going to have Leah on as well. But all I had today was those little appetizers. So here we are talking about food. And I'm like <gasps> dreaming of all of the plant-based food that I'm going to eat tonight. I'm yes. so excited. So cool. <laughs> so fun. Uh, in London, there was a place that we went to called the Green Vic. Um, and it's the, it's like tagline is the most ethical bar in the world. And it's completely vegan. Uh, everything that they do contributes to making the world a better place, right? So all their utensils are compostable, all their alcohol comes from great sources, everything in their whole restaurant is uh, vegan. And so everything is moving towards a socially conscious place. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the, so that was the idea. We actually got to go for their pop-up kind of pilot of the restaurant. And I think it went really well and they're going to be spreading that around. That's awesome. Yeah. I went to a place in London and it was amazing because it was three salad bars of vegan food and you just got in you got your plate you got your silverware and you got to walk around I mean I was floored because I was like usually you go to the salad bar and there's only a few things that I can have from even if it's a salad bar there's like all the meat and all the things it was three salad bars of food I could have and I have never been so excited in my life and I couldn't tell you what it was called but oh my god I discovered on a whim and I was so happy yeah that's so cool. I think it was, correct me if I'm wrong, in Vienna, Uli's Vega, Veganeria, Prague. in Prague, uh, that was really cool. That was home, it's like homemade plant-based foods. So it's completely plant-based wow. and it's the chef who cooks different meals every day and she collects it from local uh, vendors and so it's Ugh. local food created different every day and so you go and if you eat there every day, you're never going to. Have the same have thing. Have the same thing You're never going to get sick of it. She's never made the same thing twice when wow. we asked her about it. And it's just really wholesome food. You She's can like tell. the mom. Yeah. It's Love exactly. 
Yeah. It, okay, that was in Vienna. Uh, it was Vienna, Vienna yeah. So we'll have a video out about that. So each of these videos on our YouTube channel, what it does is kind of gives you a montage of the whole trip, a montage specifically of that country. And then we do a highlight where we introduce the restaurant. We talk through what we're eating that day. Oftentimes we'll interview the owner or the chef if they had time or if we were able to connect with them. And then uh, we, and then kind of tell you what we're up to next. So it's really fun to get to show all of that and also all the restaurants that we went to in the hotel that were worth mentioning or right. you know uh, powerful are written on our blog so for people who are interested in going to those countries yes. you can kind of follow all that stuff along that is amazing thank you so much for doing that for us yeah and how much pre-planning did you do and how much of it was discovery? Yeah. Uh, so our flights were all booked ahead of time uh, through a company called Airtrex, which is really cool because um, they were awesome. It was like a personal kind of travel planner. We were able to get really great prices for this whole trip. Awesome. Yeah. And um, so they do kind of long, crazy trips. They help you plan that sort of stuff. And uh, so that was booked and that's almost all that was planned wow yes and then you were like we're gonna get there we're gonna figure out the hotels and the meals and all of that yes but did you have like some research you're like oh we're gonna check out this place and then it was half of it like we're gonna just walk around and see yes exactly and yeah. so we we try to do is reach out to the vegan groups ahead of time and be like does anybody want to meet up does anybody have anything that we like can't miss yeah because i love happy cow i love are you familiar with a billion veg yeah okay cool yeah. yeah i love a billion veg um and those are two programs that are similar to yelp in some ways and they help you find where you're gonna go and, right. and eat and so we but they but even if something has a five-star rating and two reviews like you don't know if that's like the place you can't miss or if it just is great right right and so that we would try to use the community to help figure that out that's cool uh i just thought of some other things that i wanted to tell you about uh, okay. favorites on the trip so we did vegan food tours that were so much fun really? so we did a tokyo vegan food tour uh through magical trip which is not a vegan program, but they have a vegan food tour. I'm so glad that this exists. It's so fun. Okay. So so in, in Tokyo, um, we did it in Tel Aviv mm. uh, with B Tel Aviv tours. It was so much fun. We made amazing friends. We walked around through the city all night. We ate so much food that we were telling them, like, stop ordering, stop <laughs> ordering, because we were so full. Right. Uh, they gave us the history of each place that we were at. I can't recommend this tour more highly. It was so much fun. It sounds perfect. In Madrid, we did a Madrid tapas tour. Again, like, made friends. The people leading the tours are just so so much fun they tell you about the culture they take yeah. you to the secret places that tourists usually can't go to and just had the most magnificent food so that is really fun and I highly recommend that for people who are traveling and want to because you can make friends like if you go yes. right away you make friends now you've got the tour guide you can ask all these questions too it was just a blast. And they're so fun. Like, I'm, I am I just did one in Puerto Rico, and um, it wasn't a vegan food tour, but I was with a group that wasn't vegan, and they made a vegan, a, a, a something vegan for me at every place we went. And then the tour guide would not only know the history of the food and the drinks and everything, but he would have the history just for me, too. So great. They're so accommodating. Yeah. And they're so entertaining. Like, he was hilarious. He, was, he should have been a stand-up comedian. So This cute. guy was so funny. I love like, that. I love these, uh, the communities that they curate. And that's a, like you said, it's a great way to make new friends, too. Yeah, it's so true. And so, like, I haven't been on the one in L.A., but for people who are coming to L.A., uh -huh. uh, Lux Vegan Food Tours, have you heard of them? No, because I do my own vegan food tours. Yeah, I live here. I'm right, of like, course. Where am I going to go today? Yeah, and we, we've lived, Brian and I lived, well, I lived here for about eight years. Yeah. And so I'm just so spoiled with how many wonderful places there are. Right. And yet, I still hear of new places all the time. Oh, even today, when I live in West Hollywood, I've been to all the places in Santa Monica. I think I've been everywhere in Hollywood. And then today, twice now, I've heard of two new restaurants I need to try. One from you. Yeah. And then one from um, one of your friends. So fun. Anyways, I was like, how do I not know about these places? And one is in Beverly Hills down the street from here. So cool. I'm like... Right. And so this, like, Lux Vegan Food Tours, again, I haven't been on it yet, but I, I've seen pictures and videos, and they have this whole event that they put on for you. So, like, you have your friends coming into town, and you just want to show them around, like, right. a fabulous way to go around L.A., plus you get food. And, just, and then I don't so have fun. to drive them. Right. <laughs> exactly. So cute. Done and done. Okay, I'm so in. Okay, so you've done this whole thing, and now 
we're doing the YouTube. Yes. How are you, tell me all the avenues that you are spreading this message. Oh my gosh. So YouTube is brand new from, I mean, brand new. Like we have so 54 exciting. subscribers, right? So it's baby. I'll be 55. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Each one, like I do a huge happy dance. It's amazing. Uh, so brand new on YouTube. I've got a little beef to pick with Instagram lately because, I know. Uh, you know, I know. I just, I'm catching myself. I just said a beef to pick and I don't know that saying, but it's probably not pro animal because I'm using the word beef. It's bone. They're both bad. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, I know. I don't because I, I want to be pro animal in my language. Like I won't say pack like pack like sardines anymore. I say pack pack like matchsticks, right? So I try to be pro animal I and love like that. Yeah. Li- lift them up in my speech, yeah. right? It's like two not not uh one stone to kill two birds. It's one hand to pet two dogs. Oh, I love yeah. that. Right. Okay. So I'm stealing that, by yeah. the way. <laughs> Booty will say you're gonna hear me start saying that. Yes. It's gonna be like Seika, thank you very much. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. I'll give you credit, don't worry. Yeah. So uh, so we've got the blog that we're posting all this information on. Instagram, uh, you know, put all, so much love and effort in Instagram. And the new algorithm really made me feel like I know. I got shut I'm out of okay the world. I'm not okay yeah. with it. I'm so okay I'm, with it. they're getting the silent treatment for a little bit. Um, all, all <laughs> they my, silence us, we silence you back. It's right. It's right. All my, my lovely followers, I'm still connecting with them on stories, but no posts. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, but, but YouTube is where we're putting a lot of love and energy. Energy. So new episodes are released every Tuesday and Thursday at 9 a.m. And um, that's a whole new world. Like I've never been into producing video content and I love it. Uh, being in front of the camera is so much fun. And then getting to create like informative uh, pieces that people can consume is just a blast. Absolutely. It's like taking people around the world with us. And so how long are the videos usually? Like what's the... It depends on, uh, so there are really short ones that are like three minutes if we kind of just hopped in, showed off the food, Mm -hmm. and then closed it out. And then there are some that are 20, 30 minutes if we're doing like a long interview, interviews with different people. Um, The Osana Family Wellness that we just released today, you know, we showed off a little bit of the the yoga classes. We showed all the food we ate. We did an interview and all of that stuff. So it just depends on on what all is in the video. So they range a bit. So you took the most epic trip that we've ever talked about on Food Heals. Like I do my Italy vegan retreat and that's 10 days, you know, 12 women. And we have a blast and we do all the things. We've talked about it multiple times. But if someone is just starting out and they're like, I want to travel, I want to be vegan, what are just some, you know, you mentioned Happy Cow and a few resources. Like where are some places that people can just get started researching and looking into what's possible for them? Absolutely. My blog. Yeah. <laughs> Shameless but, self-promotion right, time. Right. Exactly. Exactly. No. So Happy Cow is huge. Uh, a Billion Veg is a somewhat new app and they are headquartered in Singapore. The other cool thing about A Billion Veg, um, I, I recommend for people who are getting started, review. Like, please put your own reviews, mm. not only on Happy Cow, not only on A Billion Veg, but on Yelp, on Google Maps. Spread the word. Spread the word because yeah. you're going to help other people gain this information. It's so important because we use these products a lot, but putting the reviews on, taking pictures, even if it's just like inside the restaurant, yeah. is going to help somebody else get the information they need. So, for sure. um, so that's one thing. But also for every review you do on A Billion Veg, you actually are able to contribute a dollar to your favorite charity. And so we're, you know, we're putting up 200 reviews on mm, a billion veg and yeah. that's like $200 to mercy for animals there you go amazing yeah so that's really powerful stuff um so using those sites you can even find on happy cow at least you can find b and airbnbs i mean not airbnb b and b's that are vegan and so that can be a great way to stop you know if you if you're going to go to a, co- a new city or a new country you get a, a vegan airbnb you get a uh vegan food tour you have a couple restaurants picked out like you don't even need anything else you're going to fill in everything right. else and you're just going to walk around and find things that's right. what happens on every trip there's also trip tribe and you can search and find which places and they'll have trips that you can literally take like a yoga retreat or whatever and you can search and you can put in a vegan only or vegan meals so or vegetarian or whatever it is and then you'll find the trips that include the meals at the yoga retreat or whatever it is which yes. i think is amazing it's so great yeah. it's so great that that was another thing we did in thailand we did a vegan yoga retreat at a place called amayan sanctuary yeah Incredible. The food is off the charts. Completely whole food, plant-based, gluten-free, I think. I think it was all gluten-free. But you just feel you just feel like a champion yeah. when you're eating that way, right? And somebody's putting so much love into the food that you're eating. How was – okay. In Italy, I found plant-based milk, even oat milk, which is my favorite, everywhere. In France, I found it in one place. 
How was the milk situation? It, it just like you're describing, yeah. it was like some places it was great, some places it was horrible. In Egypt, uh, I was asking, right, I would ask like every place that we went, do you have alt milk? And they were so confused, right? I'd be like, do you have soy milk? And they like didn't even understand. They're wow. like, we have milk. Uh-huh. I'm like, is there it from is a no cow? There is no other milk. Right. Yeah. And they're like, I don't know. Is it from a cow? <laughs> <laughs> right? So that like that's that's the level we're talking right, about. Right, they're right. like, I don't know where it comes from. It's milk. Yeah. <laughs> so uh but I was kind of you know planting the vegan seed so I would keep asking right and, yes. and and Brian would be like I don't want to disappoint you you know they're gonna say no and I'm like I know but I'm just gonna keep asking because when it comes up next time now it's gonna be the second time they heard exactly it. I so, love that yeah Sega. that's amazing so we finally we've been there for four days or so we finally get to this hotel in in Luxor and I say um we're go- sitting down for breakfast I'm like hey do you have any alt milk no we don't I ask the server who comes up to the table or he overhears me and he goes I I have soy milk and I'm like is it vegan and he's like yeah yeah I have it I'll get it from the back I'm so excited I'm gonna have uh, some milk in my tea for the first time or my right. milk in my coffee for the first time in like three weeks right because <laughs> I didn't get any in Africa uh-huh. so uh I'm so excited oh I'm sorry in Tanzania I know Egypt is in Africa but they seem different kind of uh anyway so in Tanzania uh and so he goes to the back he brings me out kind of like a little milk like uh, pour like a tiny uh-huh. little tea, milk saucer whatever you call them and I pour it into my coffee I'm so excited I take a sip and like immediately like I taste the soy yeah but I also taste cow milk huh. and I'm so like it like mixed or something and so I'm like is this does this have cow milk in it and he's like no no it's soy milk it's soy milk I'm like can you bring me the box? Because, like, uh-huh. my, my taste buds, you know, you I know. know. You know. I know. Yeah. And he brings me the box. It's soy milk. Sure enough, the second ingredient is heavy cream. What? So. <laughs> oh and you're just. God. And then I'm like, great. What so, is the purpose? Right. It's so crazy. So uh-huh. that's, yeah, that's an idea of kind of the status of the different yeah. milks that, that are available. Yeah, because in France, I was totally missing a latte because it's like, you know, I picture myself going and having the croissants and the orange juice and the latte. And I, I mean, I would have like a little espresso shot because it would be fun. But I, I, there was like no plant-based milk. As yeah. opposed to Italy where they had it in most places and I was so excited. Yeah. And it just makes for such a healthier population. You'd think, you'd think the governments and the people making the decisions about subsidies and which products right, to push right. would be pushing for the healthier options because dairy, it's like... There's no question. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. All right, Seika. Well, we have had such a good time talking to you about um, traveling and veganism. What is something outside of this that you're really passionate about? Oh, boy. Outside of traveling and veganism, what am I passionate about? (laughs) This is like what I spend most of my time on. I host vegan events to get a lot of people together. Uh, and that's a local thing that we do. We bring in a dog rescue organization mm-hmm. who actually brings puppies that are available for adoption. Okay. To, coming to the next one. Yes. Uh-huh. <laughs> Even though I know it's not in my town, but right. I'm coming. <laughs> to a brewery. And then we have a local food truck come mm-hmm. and bring food. And it's a great way to network, to make uh, make great friends with veg curious people and people who are just yeah. people who are there for the puppies, people who are there for the beer. And mm-hmm. then we kind of throw the vegan food in there so that's a blast i'd be there for all three yeah exactly yeah and then there are people who are there for all three Mm -hmm. um i'm a spin instructor that's right that's a fun fact about me that not a lot of people know but uh, except for all my amazing students who are so much fun teach an awesome uh studio in los gatos so fitness and and just kind of loving my body and how capable my body is is a huge huge part of my life um, so funny because I can't get into spin and one of my closest friends, Ashley, who's come on the trip multiple times, she is the spin girl. Like she would come to your class. You guys would be besties. I'm like, make me love spin. I don't know how to love spin. How many times have you done it? Probably in my life. Maybe 10. Okay. Recently. In a row though? No, no. I say you have to do three in order to like, oh, that's the, that's okay. like peak. That's where you have to go. Because in my first class, I walked out. Like yeah. I hated it. I thought yeah. it was stupid. Yeah. And Even now with I'm, the good music and yeah. the cool visuals and I'm still like, oh my God, this is so hard and I hate it. Yeah. But like I love other forms of exercise for yeah. some reason. I'm just not into it. Yep. It, it like really peaks my endorphins. But yeah, I always tell yeah. us people, you got to take three okay. and try different instructors so that okay. you can kind of like find your tribe. Yeah, because that matters a lot. Gotcha. 
All right, girl. Well, thank you so much. This has been so fun. Remind everyone again one more time where they can find you. You got forgive for goodness sakes. And she's on and off Instagram, but I'm sure she'll be back. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and give her a follow there. Yes, amazing. <laughs> yeah, so my my brand is For Goodness Sakes, and Sakes is a play on my name, S-E-Y-K-S. Uh, I've got Instagram, For Goodness Sakes, and For Goodness Sakes underscore foodie, which is all food. Uh, and then on the blog, forgoodnesssakes.com slash blog, and on YouTube, For Goodness Sakes. Oh, well, thanks so much for being here. Yeah. Follow her. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are a gem and it's such a blast to get to be part of this really, really powerful podcast and part of your friend group, which means a lot to me. Oh, you just made my day, girl. <laughs> These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This podcast is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Side effects of this podcast may include increased health and vitality, thoughts of living longer, developing a more positive outlook on life. In rare cases, women have experienced a strong desire to stop asking their boyfriends if they look fat in this dress. If you experience any of these symptoms, post a selfie to Instagram immediately.